In this video, we'll learn how to take a custom logo that you've drawn in another program, import it into Fusion, and make it a nice 3D extruded logo like that. Oh, baby. And this is all completely within DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. No other plugins or additional software needed. My name is Casey. I teach content creators how to make amazing things in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. I have a free course with my top tips on Fusion, the Fusion Survival Guide. There's a link down in the description below. Let's make a 3D logo, shall we? So yeah, this is what we're doing. We can take a flat logo like this, bring it in as an SVG, and then make it into this extruded fancy looking logo. Let's just open up our media pool, right click and say new fusion composition, just to restart, just to start from the bottom up. <laughs> I'm gonna hide this page bar just so we have a little bit of room and let's take a background and just drag it in here just to set our comp settings. And now we need a logo. For this, you can use any logo you want. The more complicated the logo, the more complicated this will be. But I have a logo here, just like a check mark inside of a shield thing. And it doesn't matter how you make this or if you download it from the internet or whatever you want, but it's best if it's kind of a flat one color logo because then you have to do a little bit less work. And it needs to be an SVG, a scalable vector graphic. So I exported this out of Affinity Designer as an SVG. And I don't know if you knew this, but if you go up to Fusion in the Fusion page, and go to import, you can select SVG. And I'll go to my desktop and I have shield.svg here and I'll hit enter. It'll ask to make an image size. I like to bring in a logo on a square background because then I don't need to guess on aspect ratios and everything. Although it doesn't really matter a whole lot for what we're doing here. Let's just hit okay. Now if I hit one on the keyboard, that'll bring up my logo here. It brings it in as a group. And if you double click on this little group, it will show you how it made this. And what it does is it masks a couple of background nodes. And actually, if we hit one on the keyboard, we can bring up each of these masks. We're starting with one mask, and then we have another mask that's kind of subtracting from it. And then that masks a green background. And then we have a clear background here for some reason. Anytime that you bring in an SVG, it kind of comes in sometimes in an interesting way. Sometimes it has extra stuff that you don't need. And so you can kind of go through and play with this. But what we're really after here are these masks. Path one is the outer mask and path two is the inner mask. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna select these masks and we're gonna essentially paste them into a new kind of node that's available just starting in Resolve 18.6 called S Polygon. S Polygon is a shape node that lets you draw custom shapes, which, you know, you might say, well, I thought you could already do that. Well, it's like one of those things that seems obvious, right? You should totally be able to do that. So this just lets you draw a custom shape and then use it within the shape tool stuff inside of Fusion. If you're not familiar with that, I do have a video about shape tools, which I'll link right here. But this is really cool because we're able to do a lot of neat stuff with this polygon mask. We can make this whatever shape we want and we can run it through filters like S duplicate, you know, which will make multiple copies of it. And you can do all kinds of fancy things with shape nodes. But this combined with another new node, which is called the extrude 3D node. If we pipe just any shape into the extrude 3D node, hit two on the keyboard, we can extrude this a lot like you would extrude text. We just push up the extrusion depth and look at this baby. I'll go up here and click on this white circle once and that'll kind of switch the preview shading so we can actually see this in 3D. And look what's happening here. It's taking this shape that we have and it's extruding it in 3D space. So we can adjust the shape in real time and look at this, it changes that 3D mesh. What a cool thing to be able to do. So it's not quite like modeling something, but you could probably do some pretty crazy stuff just by combining these extruded shapes. And you can also change the bevel on this and really kind of get some cool stuff. Pretty much exactly like it extrudes 3D text, you can do that with these shapes. And this works with the polygon shape and any other kind of shape node. You can just plug that into extrude 3D. So armed with that knowledge, what we really need to do here is bring these masks into our polygon shape. Now I've been playing around with this for a little bit and it feels like it should be maybe a little more straightforward than it is, but here's a way that I've found to copy this in. There might be an easier way. If we just get rid of everything in this polygon mask right here, where we can you know, draw a new mask if we want to, 
and we just have a kind of a blank screen. We can right click anywhere and go down to S polygon polyline. And we have a bunch of options to do things like create different shapes. We can copy and paste our path and we can even export and import different shapes. So if we go to our path here for our shield, I'll just hit one on the keyboard to bring this up. I can select all of these points like this, right click anywhere. And I've had a little bit of luck just saying copy here and then going into polygon one, polyline, paste like that. And that works. So I can kind of bring that in. Sometimes for whatever reason, I've had that give me trouble and you can select all the points, right click and go down to polyline export. And you can export this as kind of its standalone file. And then you can right click and go to polyline import shape like this. In fact, I'll show you that too. I'll copy and paste this because we're just going to make two polygons here. Select all of this and get rid of it. And in this one, we'll right click polyline import shape. And I already have a couple shapes exported here. Let's grab path one, two, open that. And that's our check mark. One thing you'll notice is that the masks don't really line up. They're not really in the right place, which has something to do with their sizing, I think. And normally if you're just trying to bring in a logo and make it into a shape, that might be a little bit more of a problem. But for what we're doing, it's kind of fine that they're sort of off because we're not really going to use this view. We're going to just bring this shape into 3D and it's not really gonna matter that it's kind of off screen. But first let's grab a extrude 3D and let's pump this polygon into extrude 3D and hit two on the keyboard. And now we can see our shape here in 3D. So it's working. But to get like our original logo, we have the shield and then we have this check mark cut out of it. We need to do something called a Boolean. So let's say S Boolean. This is a Boolean that takes one shape and cuts another shape out of it. So I can hold shift and drag this down here and we'll plug this one into the foreground here of the Boolean. And when we select Boolean right here, we can change the kind of Boolean we want. And let's just say operation subtract and look what happens. We have this check mark being subtracted from our shield. So now we have our logo floating in 3D space, but it's still 2D. We just need to push up the extrusion depth and we'll extrude that. I like to bevel it a little bit. So let's add a little bevel to the sides like this. Yeah, that looks sick. Okay, let's take the depth down a little bit. And now we have this kind of extruded 3D logo. So good. And from there you can do lots of cool stuff. You can change its material, you can add lights, you can do all kinds of stuff to it. And rather than do all of that work that I've been playing with for a while, again, let me kind of just show you what I did with this. Here in our other composition, I've kind of mocked up a little, sort of like, you know, kind of commercial graphics. Shh. Trusted, safe, secure. Act you good. Trusty, safe. And we have quite a nice looking 3D logo here that kind of moves into place. And this, I made with this little node graph here. Let's just kind of break this down. We started with our polygons just like we just did with the Boolean, kind of cutting it out. And I broke this into two extrude 3Ds. One of them extrudes this and colors it green. The other one extrudes it and colors it kind of this dark blue. And then I took this extrusion and this extrusion and put them together and just kind of offset them a little bit. One's just a little bit more beveled and kind of pushed back in space. And the other one just kind of, you know, sits in front of it like this. And it just looks fancy. It looks like it's multiple layers and stuff. And we're transforming each of those. We're just rotating them on this axis. And we have some lighting setups here and we're bringing this into kind of the USD workflow. So we can use the U lights and the materials for USD and everything that work with the storm renderer that looks a lot nicer in my opinion. And yeah, just a lot of time kind of messing around with the lighting here to make this look nice. If you want me to go a little bit deeper in kind of 3D lighting and that kind of stuff in Fusion, let me know. One thing that's really nice in 18.6 is this U replace material. Until now, we haven't really been able to just replace a material here in the node graph, which has made it really annoying to texture stuff. And there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do now with replace material. And so I made this kind of green metallic material using that. And yeah, put all of that stuff into a scene together and brought it through the U renderer. 
And so we just have this rotating here in the render. And then I took that render and did some color correction to it and transformed it and kind of animated it moving in like that, gave it a little drop shadow and merged it over this blue background. And then we put the text over that and we have our finished thing. Whoosh. So yeah, that's kind of a little 3D logo, 3D graphic infusion. And if you're looking at this and you're like, dang, man, th that's a lot of work and those nodes are kind of confusing. And I really wish there was a great way for me to learn fusion. Well, we actually have a course for you, Fusion Zero to Hero. Check it up there. We not only teach you how to use fusion, but how to have the mindset of a compositor so that you can make your own custom things and make them look good. Pretty cool stuff going on Black Magic, adding a little bit of fanciness to fusion. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of cool. I don't know why I'm dancing like this, but I am. <laughs>